Hi! Welcome to Holy Time TV. Before we start, smash that subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. The verses Exodus chapter 35 verses 30 to 33 from the New International Version, NIV, of the Bible read as follows. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. In these verses, Moses is acknowledging that Bezalel, son of Uri and Hur from the tribe of Judah, has been chosen by God to be a craftsman for the Israelites. Bezalel is described as being filled with the Spirit of God, giving him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in various artistic and crafting skills. This reflects the biblical view of God's direct involvement in providing the necessary abilities for the important work of constructing the tabernacle, which was a key part of Israelite religious practice. In the hushed silence of the Israelite camp, a voice echoed forth. It was Moses, the humble yet steadfast leader of the Israelites. He addressed the multitude, all of whom had recently been delivered from Egyptian bondage by the mighty hand of God. Mighty Yahweh, the Lord our God, has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, Moses announced. The camp was filled with murmurs and whispers as Bezalel, a man known for his craftsmanship, stepped forward. Bezalel, a quiet man, was not one for the spotlight. Yet, now he found himself the center of attention, chosen by God for a divine task. And the Lord has filled him with his spirit. Moses continued, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. Bezalel felt a weight on his shoulders, but also a comfort within his spirit. He was aware that this divine call was no ordinary commission, but a holy task. Bezalel wasn't alone, though. God had appointed another artisan to assist him, Oholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. Together, they were entrusted with the workmanship of the tabernacle, a sanctuary where God himself would dwell among his people. Oholiab was renowned for his skill in weaving fabrics and crafting with threads of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen. Oholiab, like Bezalel, was a man who found peace in the rhythm of his work. The detailed intricacies of fabrics and the satisfaction of constructing something of beauty from raw materials. Working side by side, the two craftsmen forged a strong partnership, despite being from different tribes. Bezalel would often be seen melting gold, silver, and bronze, meticulously molding them into divine artifacts, while Oholiab, with his weaver's shuttle constantly in motion, created the finest of textiles and curtains. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, as they labored with their teams to create the grand design that God had revealed to Moses. The labor was intense, but their spirits were unfaltering. The presence of God was evident in their daily work, guiding their hands and filling their hearts. The people watched in awe as the structure of the tabernacle started to take shape under the guidance of Bezalel and Oholiah. Underneath the cloudless desert sky, amidst the vast expanse of sand, the tabernacle rose, majestic and resplendent, a divine sanctuary birthed from humble hands. In the cool of the evening, as Bezalel and Oholiab looked upon the completed work, their hearts swelled with an overwhelming sense of gratitude and humility. They were mere craftsmen, yet God had chosen them to construct his dwelling place among his people. God's selection of Bezalel and Oholiab set a precedent for all generations, showing that God values all types of work and that he can use anyone, regardless of their trade or background, for his divine purpose. Their story is a reminder of how our skills, however seemingly mundane, can be used for extraordinary purposes when guided by the divine hand of God. Beloved, I want to tell you a story from a book I've been reading, a timeless book, 
a book that's inspired countless souls, the Bible. Today, we're going to dive into Exodus, where Moses led God's people out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. Now, this wasn't just a physical journey, but also a spiritual journey of faith, perseverance, and grace. In this story, there are two men, Bezalel and Oholiab. They were not prophets or warriors. They were craftsmen, ordinary men with extraordinary talents. God filled them with his spirit, his wisdom, his understanding, and his knowledge. God chose them to create the tabernacle, a holy place of worship. Isn't that incredible? That these two ordinary men, skilled in their crafts, were chosen by God for his divine purpose? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. It's not about how great or small our talents are, it's about the one who gave us those talents. Friends, we're all like Bezalel and Oholiab. We all have talents, whether they're big or small, ordinary or extraordinary. These talents come from God. Your ability to sing, to write, to cook, to teach, to listen, to encourage, to love. All of these talents are gifts from God. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You see, it's not about comparing our talents with others. No, it's about using our talents for the glory of God, serving His kingdom, blessing others, spreading His love, and making this world a better place. So, what are you doing with your talents? Are you like Bezalel and Oholiab, using your talents for God's glory, or are you hiding them, thinking they're not good enough, not important enough? Let me tell you something. You are good enough. You are important. The talents God has given you are important. You don't need to be the best singer, the best cook, the best writer. You just need to be the best you can be, because God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Your talents, no matter how ordinary they may seem, can become extraordinary when you dedicate them to God. It's not about what you do, it's about who you do it for. When you use your talents for God, when you dedicate your work to Him, it becomes something special, something divine. So, this week, as you go about your days, remember Bezalel and Oholiab. Remember their ordinary yet extraordinary talents. And remember that you, too, have talents given to you by God. Use them for His glory, and watch how He blesses you and those around you. Friends, God is calling each one of us, just like He called Bezalel and Oholiab. He's given us talents, and He wants us to use them. So, let's step out in faith, put our talents to work, and watch how God uses us to bring about His kingdom here on earth. God bless you all. If you liked this video, don't forget hit that like button, and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.